Well, y'all want to just take a nap or you want me to? Uh... <laughs> a lot of folks been staying up late and working hard. You get in here and you finally got cleaned up. You get comfortable and get still for a little bit. <laughs> well, that's all right. We'll give you special dispensation tonight. If anybody starts snoring, I'll just preach another direction. <laughs> I'll preach to the folks on the internet tonight. Hallelujah. <laughs> Would you go to Hebrews, the sixth chapter, please? I appreciate anybody and everybody that prayed for us and believed with us for the meetings down at the uh, Days of Refreshing. The Lord really helped us. Uh, I guess we were on uh, Daystar one night, right? And then we were, of course, on the Internet. But the Lord really helped us. And, and for those of you that did join in on any of it, uh, what, a couple of weeks before I was here, we were praying on Wednesday night, and, and we prayed about some things. And some of that was some of the answers I'm talking, I was talking about that the Lord was giving us. And I believe the Lord would have us get on that in the church at the right time and just camp on it. And I'm excited because I can already see uh, how in obeying Him in these directions that immediately the power of God can become stronger and the glory of God be more manifest in our services and in our midst. I'm, I'm very excited. We're on the threshold of great things. Great things. I mean, God's doing great things for us naturally, and we're so happy about that. But really, that's the smaller part of what's going on here because the greatest things are always spiritual. Of course, if you didn't have a natural place to meet in, right? I mean, it'd be a challenge to, uh, to have all the spiritual things that you should. But thank God, because of Him, we can have it all. He said all things are... Yeah, and I was quoting, though, all things are yours. But both of those are true. So you're absolutely right on both counts. All things are yours, and all things are possible to him that believes. Hebrews 6, if you didn't bring a Bible with you this evening, if you'd hold up your hand, we have extra Bibles. Be glad to let you use one of ours. Hold up your hand and... Turn to Hebrews 6. Let your eyes rest on these words. Believe with me tonight. Let's believe for utterance. We don't want to go uh, too short. Don't want to go too long. Don't want to go any direction except the one he'd like for us to. Right? Do just exactly what he would have us to do. That's my desire. I'm not trying to prove anything to you tonight about myself. I used to hear Brother Hagin, my father in the faith, he said, uh, I don't have the preacher's itch. Because <laughs> he'd been in ministry for decades. And he said, you know, I don't have the preacher's itch. I, I'm not trying to prove anything. And thank God I feel that way too. I, the Lord's given us a lot of good opportunity to preach, but uh, I'm, I'm just hungry for what he wants. That's it. That's it. And if all of us together on that, that's what we'll have. That's what we'll have. Hebrews 6. We've uh, been on this subject for some weeks now. The subject of diligence. Diligence. So we can sure see the wisdom of the Lord in getting us ready. Because <laughs> we, we, we need to be diligent right now. We've got something in front of us. And we just need to stay with it till we get it done. Till the Lord does it through us. And in Hebrews 6 and verse 10, it says, God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. Well, I've been seeing a lot he can remember. Which you have showed toward his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. You know, I, I really believe the Lord's going to make short work of what we're dealing with right now and even in adding to us and expanding us after this so that soon and very soon we can have all this stuff set up and have it top-notch, 
all paid for, and we can just focus outside ourselves. You hungry for that? You desire that? We can be ministering to thousands and thousands every week locally, but much more beyond that. And I mean, when you got all your stuff paid for and all your bills are done, and, and then you can sow big time, right, into other people's outreaches. I already, I already know of uh, some things. <laughs> and it's good. I said, it's good. Some of the things we've kind of joked about in times past, I, I'm beginning to see the Lord serious about it. And, and, we, and He's going to enable us to do it. Glory to God. I mean, the best by far is in front of us. Oh, and I mean, he's, he's gearing us up to really reach out more than we have thought about. But uh, he said, you've ministered, you, the, the love and work you've showed toward his name, and you've ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. Everybody say, to the end. To the end. To the end. Till it's done. Till it's complete. Every one of you to show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope or expectation to the end. That you be not slothful. One translation says dull and lazy. But followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Thank you, Lord. Does diligence have anything to do with faith and obtaining the promises? Yes. It's not by works now. We, we don't work and earn the blessing of God. But at the same time, when he tells you, you know, sometimes people say, well, if it's the Lord, it'll happen. Not if you don't do what he tells you to do. Right. Are y'all with me? Yes. Oh, well, now, if it's the Lord, I had a preacher one time come. I could tell he had a problem time he got down to the front. <laughs> he said, oh, now, you know, that was, that was just fine preaching tonight. He said, that was, uh, that was fine, that was fine. He said, but <laughs> I just believe. How many know he's already off? Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you say that, Brother Keith? You don't need to be quoting what you believe. You need to be quoting what he said. Right? I just believe that if it's God's will, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. No matter what you think or I think or we do or don't do, if it's the will of God, it's going to happen. Well, he's wrong. I said he's wrong. First of all, he's not quoting any scripture. That's what he thinks. That all sounds good. And because that's been preached for hundreds of years traditionally, it sounds right to us. But how many know it is the will of God for everybody to be saved? That's right? right? Yeah. Well, then if it's the will of God, it's going to happen. <laughs> well, it ain't happening. Right? We know it's the will of God for everybody to be saved, but didn't he tell us, go into all the world, yes. proclaim the good news, yes. and everybody's going to get saved? No. Uh-uh. He that believes, yes. right, yes. and is baptized to be saved, he that believeth not. Yes. Yeah, but it's the will of God for him to be saved. Yeah, but if you don't do what he told you to do, and he told us to believe on Jesus, yes. didn't he? And if you don't do it, then even though it's His will for you to be saved, His will will not be done in your life. Now, you can't stop the will of God for my life. But you can hinder it in your own life. But how many know what I'm talking about? I mean, millions of people believe what He was shaking His finger and telling me. Don't they? Oh, now. If it's the will of God, 
It's going to happen because God is in control. Well, both of those statements leave wrong impressions, leave the idea that some of things that contradict the Bible. If you don't do what the Lord tells you to do and pursue it diligently, you're not going to have his full will in your life. You can disobey, right? And wind up not having some things that was his will for you to have. Hmm? So what the Bible say, Abraham, was he diligent to stand and believe God year after year? And after he patiently endured, he obtained the promise. He didn't believe it was just all up to God. He held on to it. He believed it. He expected it, faith and patience. And that's what he's saying here, that every one of us be diligent to the full assurance of expectation to the end and to not be slothful and lazy. Why, what would it mean, don't be slothful, don't be lazy? Another translation says, don't be half-hearted. Another one said, don't be sluggish. But imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Romans 12, 11 says, don't be slothful in business, but be fervent in spirit. The NIV says, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Let me give you the definitions of the word diligence again. To be diligent means to be vehement, to be earnest, to be fervent. To be eager, to be determined, to be prompt, do it early, do it with speed. Somebody say, stay after it. (laughs) Slothful means to lean idly, to be indolent or slack, to be remiss, to be tardy, to be slow, to delay. Can you miss stuff doing that? Can you miss God? Can you miss blessings? Can you miss the will of God? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You know, the Bible talked about uh, Esau and how that he despised his birthright. You remember that? And uh, to despise, one definition is to, to lightly esteem, to fail to value. And so he was hungry. And his brother said, well, you know, sell me your birthright. Now, I'll feed you. And he said, ah, this birthright, what good does that do me? I'm hungry. I'm starving to death. Sure, you can have it. Give me a bowl of pottage. And uh, he despised it, and he lost it. And later on, decided he wanted it and tried to get it. But the Bible said, though he cried and sought it, he couldn't get it changed. It was too late. He had missed his opportunity and lost it. So there are things that when it's time to get it, it's time to get it. It's time to do it, it's time to do it. And and, and you have to get after it and stay after it, and your flesh won't want to. But you must be diligent. Now don't think every time I say something that I'm only talking about our little project across town over here. Because I'm not. This, This is much further than this. Of course, we're we're putting action to it right now, but there's some things I I want us to look at. Uh, People have perverted faith and used faith, so-called, as an excuse to be lazy. Have you noticed this? People have said, oh, you know, faith is a rest. We which have believed have entered into rest. So I'm just going to lay on the couch. Well, the Lord dealt with you to get up and go do something. Well, I'm just going to lay here and believe it gets done. Hmm? Well, the Lord dealt with you to take care of this. Get to it. Don't don't wait till tomorrow. Do it now. Well, I'm just going to trust the Lord that it'll all be okay and not worry about it. Do you hear what we're talking about now? See, people are using faith principles that are right in and of themselves, but you can't ignore the leading of the Spirit and make faith confessions 
and come out all right. You cannot successfully separate living by faith from being led by the Spirit. The two go hand in hand. Right? Sure, if the Lord tells you, stand still, just watch me work. Well, then for you to do anything else would be wrong. But there are times he'll tell you, get up and go do this. Right? And it's faith for you to get up and go do it. Diligently. And if you sit back and not act on it, you're going to be slothful. You're going to be lazy. But you're going to say, I just believe everything's going to be okay. The Lord gave you three opportunities to make some money. Dealt with you to get after it. But you say, I don't feel like working. I'm just going to confess the money comes in. I call every bill paid. Well, see, the faith principle you're talking about is right. But you're ignoring the leading of the Lord. And it's not faith to ignore the Lord. Are y'all with me tonight now? Y'all with me? So when the Lord tells us to do something, whatever it is, the faith thing to do is to do it and do it vehemently and passionately and promptly and completely and earnestly to do it diligently. And those that do it are operating in faith and patience. I'm I'm quoting from the rest of our our text passage now. And they will, like Abraham, obtain the promises. Can you say amen? Uh, Notice with me, turn, turn in the scripture. To the book of Luke, Luke chapter 15, Luke chapter 15. I'm going to read several verses to you out of Proverbs. You just stay where you are in Luke. And uh, I just want you to listen to these for a minute. We may go back to some of these. But I just want to give you an overview. There's, there's more than this. But just an overview of, of some of the benefits of being diligent. We talked some about it last week. But are there, I mean, everybody knows, yeah, you ought to be diligent. The Bible's already told us that. But what's in this for you? If you are diligent, is it going to pay off? Huh? I mean, you ought to obey just because he told you to. But how many know it pays to obey? Pays to obey. If you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Listen to some of these. You can jot them down if you want to. Pop them up on the screen if y'all can catch them in time, guys. But Proverbs eleven twenty seven. Eleven twenty seven. He that diligently... Seeks good, does what? Procureth favor. Now, favor in life is like oil to an engine, right? It's like blood to your body. It's like fuel to your car. I mean, you can you can bang your head and and try to push your way through life, or you can be graced. <laughs> now, if you, I know you've had some days where you tried to do it on your own and it didn't go good. But if you ever had a day where you just operated in the grace of God all day, then you learn the difference. And you decide, this is how I want to do it from now on. But notice this who is procuring favor? the one who is diligently seeking good. Or another way of saying it, somebody is diligently seeking God. God is good. Diligently seeking God's way. His way is good. Diligently seeking His His plan, His purpose, His leading. Remember, he that comes to God must believe He is. And he must believe something else. That He is a 
rewarder of who? Those that diligently seek him. Well, isn't he good? Seeking him, you're seeking good. And he that diligently seeks good, diligently seeks God, is procuring favor. You're piling it up in your life. This is worth you coming out tonight right here. Does it pay to be diligent? You procure favor. Let me read some other translations. One says, if you search for good, you'll find favor. If you search for evil, it'll find you. (laughs) The Darby says, he that is earnest after good seeks favor. He who seeks good finds goodwill. Now that's a, that's a different word they use, but, but when somebody looks at you, don't even know you, wants to do something for you. That's happening every day at the church here. Every day. People that we've never met before, people we've never done business with before, we're not asking. We're not saying, oh, we're a church. Could you help us? Could you help us? Please, could you give us a church discount? Please, could you give us a... No, we're not doing that. Don't believe in that. And if you heard it from somebody, it didn't come from me. (laughs) And if you asked it, don't ask it again. We don't ask for church discounts. Somebody said, why? We don't need them. I said, oh, y'all just got more money. You know what to do? We're believing God day to day. You can see that. But, but, the Lord didn't tell us to do that. Believers are not beggars. And if somebody does something because they feel sorry for you, it's not because God dealt with them to. And you don't want sympathy money. <laughs> I got four people with me in here tonight. You don't, you don't need it. You don't have to resort to that if you'll obey God and do what He tells you to do. And sow your seed and believe God and seek His way. He will deal with people. On your behalf, He will incline their hearts towards you. I don't, I've, more than once, I've had people look at me in the middle of things and go, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm going to do this for you. And I've said, well, no, I'm not asking you to. They said, I know it, but... But I, I'm going to do it. I don't know why I'm doing it. Sometimes it's total strangers that you've never met. Well, what is that? That's the favor of God. God's dealing with them to do something. Right? Well, that's not just for preachers now. That's for all believers. That's for anybody that will diligently seek good and seek Him. Right? What will happen is God will open their eyes and he'll enlighten them as to what's going on and they'll see you as a good investment. I said they'll see you as a good investment. Let me keep reading. Does it pay to be diligent? Proverbs 10 verse 4. 10 verse 4. The hand of the diligent makes rich. Proverbs 12 and 24. 12 and 24, the hand of the diligent shall bear rule. That means be in charge. Proverbs 12, 27. This is a good one. Put this one up on the screen in uh, uh, Proverbs 12, 27. The substance of a diligent man is precious. And if you look at the language, you can see that it's, uh, it's open to a, a different structure. The RSV brings it out. The RSV translation, put that up there if you would, if you can find it. What's that, revised standard? They're looking. It says, the diligent man will get precious wealth. Precious wealth. That, put the Amplified. I, I'm sure we got that, right? The Amplified. There's the RSV. There it is. They found it. The diligent man will get precious wealth. And then put the Amplified up there. Thank you. The uh, diligent man gets precious possessions. Precious possessions. So when people come in your house, your big, nice, paid-for house, 
And they see these expensive stuff in there. You just say, well, the Bible came to pass. (laughs) Don't get mad at me. I didn't write the Bible. Right? The Lord did it. I mean, this is not the only verse that talks about this. Uh, How many remember Psalm 112? Wealth and riches will be in his house. Hmm? Oh, I got people looking at me funny. Go to Psalm 112. Now, you believe the Bible, don't you? How many Bible believers do I have in here? I had a fellow one time get upset about talking about some of these things. He said, now, now, I don't care about all that. I don't care about all that. I I don't want all that. I said, well, I said, would you submit to the will of God? He said, what? I said, well, if you found out that the Lord wanted you to prosper, would you submit to his will? Well, well, yeah, but I said, simple question. If you, if, okay, say if, if you found out it was God's will for you to be rich, would you submit to the will of God? Well, I I, I don't believe in I said, are you listening to yourself? This is not a hard question. (laughs) Maybe you don't believe it is. Okay, I just said if. If you did find out it was God's will for you to prosper and be rich, would you submit to His will? Even if you didn't want to be. Would you say, okay, Lord, not my will, but yours will, your will be done. If you want me rich, I don't want to be, but okay. And he never would say it. He never would say he would submit to the will of God. See, people have made the word of God of none effect by their traditions. Psalm 112, are you there? I think I'm talking to some people that will submit to the will. If you find out it's the will of God, you will submit to it, right? Even if it's different from how you thought. I said, why in the world would God want me rich? I could give you a bunch of reasons. And most of them do not have to do with you. <laughs> right? <laughs> you could help get this gospel out. You could help brothers and sisters. You could feed people. You could clothe people. You could do all kind of stuff with a bunch of money. It is the will of God for you to have ability in these areas. But it don't come just by, you know, letting the thought cross your mind. You have to go after it. And you have to diligently. Somebody say diligently. Diligently seek the Lord. Diligently believe. Diligently sow. Diligently obey. And do it year after year. And if you will, the Word of God cannot fail. You will prosper. You'll come up. And you'll, God will use you to help other people and be a blessing to other people. Psalm 112. And along with that, you'll enjoy some nice stuff yourself. You know one great thing about being a pipeline? Think about it now. A pipeline that's flowing all kind of water through it. You know one good thing about being a, a pipeline though? You're always full of water. <laughs> is that right? I mean, it's flowing in, it's flowing out, but during the process, you're always full. <laughs> so you're enjoying water all the time, even though it's flowing in and it's flowing out. Psalm 112. Psalm 112. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord that delights greatly in his commandments. His seed will be mighty on the earth. Mighty in the Bible includes the idea of wealthy. Study it. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Here he qualifies it so that there is no doubt. Verse 3. Read it. 
wealth and riches shall be in his house. Whose house? (laughs) Back up verse 1. Whose house? The man that fears the Lord reverences him, loves him, respects him, honors him, and that delights greatly in his commandments. How many know if you do delight greatly in his commandments, that means you're going to be obeying his commandments, which ties in with other scriptures. You be willing and obedient, you're going to eat the good of the land. Wealth and riches will be in his house. You know, there's all kind of people who don't like that verse. They just don't like that when you say it. Read it out loud, verse 3. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. Whose house? Well, if you fear the Lord and obey him and delight in what he says do, then wealth and riches will be in your house. What if it's not the will of God? I'm reading the will of God. I'm reading the will of God. It don't get any more will of God than this. I'm reading the perfect will of God for your life right here. It doesn't get any more perfect will of God than this. Wealth and riches shall be in your house. It's okay to say my. My house. If, if, if you're going to reverence the Lord and respect the Lord, seek Him and obey Him, can you say glory to God? I think we ought to say it one more time because there's still some folk that don't like it. (laughs) Say it out loud. Wealth, wealth, and riches shall be in my house. What do I need with wealth and riches? God will show you. There's all kind of things you can do with wealth and riches. Wealthy folks have choices. Poor folks don't. Choices. And God will show you. He'll show you exactly what to do. Now, what, the reason we're talking about this is because he, he, we had read out of the Proverbs that the diligent man gets precious possessions. So God's going to give you some nice things. Amen? Amen? You can enjoy some of them. You can bless other people with some of them. Right? You know something Brother T.L. Osborne said that's uh, uh, stayed with me, stuck with me. when I, I, I heard somebody else quote him and, that knew him and was with him. And he said, uh, he said, surround yourself with things that are beautiful to you. He said, it, uh, it inspires creativity. It's uh, when people live in abject poverty, it's not conducive to creativity. Are you listening? Uh, I know years ago I was driving through a, a very rough part of a major city. You'd call it a ghetto. And I saw young people out on the street. And the look in their eyes. And, of course, so much crime. People would call it a dangerous place. And uh, the Lord spoke to my heart while we were driving through. He said, no vision. No vision. The people have no vision. And what happens where people have no vision? They perish, and people were perishing in this place by the thousands. Perishing daily in different ways. What did they need? Hmm? They don't just need somebody to come tell them they're going to hell if they don't change. What do they need? They need vision, right? A vision of what? A vision of the goodness of of God, a vision of a God that if you'll believe in Him and if you'll seek Him diligently, He will reward you with good, a a vision 
of a good God that the Bible of the psalmist said he takes beggars out of the garbage pile and he sets them with princes. A vision that no matter who I am, no matter what I don't know, no matter what education I don't have, or who my daddy was, or who my mama was, I can believe God and all things are possible to him that believes. I can come up out of here. I can have a good life. I can be used of God. I can prosper. I can be healed. I can be rich. I can be forgiven. I can be somebody that God can use. A vision. But see... Many parts of so-called Christianity, which are just traditional, they're not telling them that. They're telling them, you know, God had them born into poverty. And it was His will, and they don't understand it. And it might be God's will for them to die from a stray bullet tomorrow. But just to, just to submit to the will of God. And so you still, after hearing all that, you still have no vision. But that's not the real Word of God. I said, that's not the real Word of God. The real Word of God, when you hear it, your spirit leaps up inside you. And you go, I can. I can have it. I can do it. I can be it. Anything's possible. Anything. What they say is impossible is possible. I can have it. I can see it. I can do it. By God's grace. Can you say amen? So let's have vision. Let's think big. Right? You know, when you live in a a terrible place, a dirty place, a lousy place, you eat terrible food and you have terrible clothes, day in, day out, I mean, it's easy for other folk to say, oh, be full of joy. (laughs) Enjoy life. But you're dealing with this every day. It's no fun. And in places like that, people are yielding to depression all around you. People are yielding to hopelessness. And these places are not conducive. The environment is not conducive for healing and prospering and victories. And you can't control everybody. And some people, no matter what they hear, they're not going to believe it and they're not going to receive it. But God will get you out. That was weak. I said, God will get you out. He will get you out. Even if other people are not going to go with Him and they're going to stay in their little small broke world, God will get you out. They can make fun of you. They can laugh at you. They can criticize you. But God will still get you out and prosper you. And for it's over with, wealth and riches will be in your house. You can get up in the morning in a nice place. People say, ah, that don't matter. That don't matter. It does matter. It does make a difference. Amen. I have prayed in a car with the heater broke in the wintertime. While I was driving to work in the wintertime, my feet got so cold... I thought they never would be the same. Anybody know what I'm talking about or not? You get an old drafty car, but the heater don't work in the middle of winter. Oh, man. And I prayed, and I blessed the Lord, and I thanked the Lord. I have also prayed in a new car with climate control and heated seats. I don't know, but what I could pray better. Better. In a new car. (laughs) Some folk don't like that at all. (laughs) Well, who's the new cars for? Just the drug dealers? People that sell pornographic magazines? Who's it for? How many understand no man or woman could come up with the technology of how to develop these materials and how to build these machines except God gave it to them, right? Well, if God gave it to them, did He just give it to the world, to sinners, to the ungodly? Me and you could drool over? Every good gift and every perfect gift comes from the Lord. 
If it's good, it's from Him. And it's for you. Say it out loud. If it's good, it's from God. And it's for me. Now, we need a lot of mind renewal on this. We just need to keep hearing it. That's why I keep preaching it. Ugly grams and all. <laughs> Something else Brother Hagin used to say, I feel like that once in a while now. He said they, they wrote this big old article on him and, you know, just really maligned him and said some ugly negative stuff. And he said, ah, he said, I've been criticized by experts. He said, these little old spurts don't bother me. <laughs> he said, if they told on me I killed my own grandma, I wouldn't even take time to deny it. He said, I'm just going to preach the gospel, do what God told me to do. And that shows some maturity, doesn't it? Because if you're going to get ruffled and upset about everything that comes down the pike, the devil will see to it that enough comes down the pike that you stay un unraveled. Stay upset all the time. And if you do that, then his ploy was effective. He's hindering your ministry. He's hindering you doing what the Lord told you to do. I, you know, something, something negative like that comes along. The first thing I do is look at it and say, is it true? Is it true? Did I do that? Am I wrong? Is it true? Try to be honest with yourself. Look at it. And if not... Then I have a file where we put them. Yeah. It's on the floor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> say it again. Say it again. Wealth, Wealth. And, riches and riches shall be, shall be in, my house. in my house. Hallelujah. Now that's the Bible. That ain't Brother Keith. That's the Bible. Luke 15. Did you find that place? Luke 15. Now we are, uh, we're touching on something. I've said it in, in one or two ways, but let me see if I can say it in, in a different way. Uh, we're talking about the connection between operating in faith and being led by the Spirit. Can you successfully separate the two? Hmm? No. If you're going to be protected, for instance, I know somebody called me a while back and wanted me to pray for them. They're going to be in a dangerous place and some dangerous things going on. I said, sure, I will. I said, I will. I said, but there's something the Lord needs from you to go along with this. It's not just all up to Him. You know, we camped on Psalm 91 for weeks around here. You remember that? And we saw there's a Godward side to it, but oh, there's our side to it, right? And we, we got to do our part. And most folk just read well, a lot of folk read Psalm 91, and all they talk about is God protecting you. But we have a part. So I, I said, I'm, I'm going to send you a set of, of ministry materials, DVDs, and uh, it was on, you know, the Spirit-led life. And I said, focus on this. I said, yeah, the Lord will help you, but you've got to listen. And you've got to do what He tells you to do. And so you can be confessing, the Lord's protecting me, the Lord's protecting me, but if you ignore Him when He directs you to do something then you're ignoring his protection. He's trying to protect you, but you're not listening. And can you just ignore his leading and say, no, I'm just believing I'm protected and go on and be okay? No, that's how you get in trouble. So do you need to always keep in mind, keep connected, believe in God, faith in God, and being led by the Spirit together all the time? You cannot successfully separate them. Now in uh, do it this way. Where, where are you? Luke fifteen. Go to Luke twelve. Then perhaps we'll get to fifteen. Luke twelve. The Lord's helping us. Luke twelve, and the end of the chapter. 
verse 58. Luke 12, 58. Who's talking here? Jesus. Jesus, the Master. Red letters. When you go with your adversary to the magistrate, as you are in the way, do what? Do what? Give diligence that you may be delivered from him. Who's going to do this? Not the Lord. Who's going to do this? You're going to do it. Give diligence that you may be delivered from him, lest or unless he hail you or haul you to the judge, and the judge deliver you to the officer, and the officer throw you in prison. I tell you, you shall not depart. You won't get out of there till you have paid the very last mite, or we'd say penny. Is, is there a window here where if a person would be diligent, some things, some things could be averted? Boy, yes, we have seen this, especially in recent times and years, where some things are going on, and the Lord deal with you, or deal with people, do this. Do this now. Take, get on this. And because people don't like confrontation, they're not comfortable, they don't want to do that, too proud to do it, too lazy to do it, well, I'm just going to pray and believe God it's all going to be all right. No, you're going to pay the last penny. Are y'all with me or not? Why? Because you can't believe God it's going to be all right while ignoring what he told you to do. It's not going to work. What's it time to do when he tells you something? Do it and not just do it. Do it diligently. Do it earnestly. Do it fervently. Do it completely. Do it till it's done. Lord, help me to get this out. You know, you, you see what's going on with the church right now. How many understand if we had lorded around another two or three weeks? You, you don't know all the details, but I'm telling you, it had been a totally different story. Totally different story. There was a time when we were supposed to get on it. I'm talking about before all the construction started. I'm talking about securing the place. There was a time when it was right now. The Lord was dealing with Phyllis and dealing with staff and dealing with different ones. Go here. Check on this. Find out about this. Get on this. And when the Lord deals with you, you don't say, I'll think about it tomorrow. Are y'all with me or not? That there is, when the Lord deals with you, there are things that are time sensitive. They're critical. He has, he has moved sometimes for years and decades. He's moved people. He's moved things. And he's got you a window. Come on, is somebody believing with me or not here? He's got you a window. Mr. <laughs> well, he's God. I mean, what's the big deal? Because he's working with human beings. In, in an in a earth filled with curse and filled with demons. And he's not going to override their will. And it takes nothing short of the wisdom and ability of God to orchestrate what he does without overriding people's will. It's amazing what he does. Why? Because somebody was believing him. Somebody was believing him. And when you believe him and, and he works and something be will begin to break and favor will begin to come and you got a window and the Lord will, will tap you and go, check on this, do this, move on this, act on this. And when he does, what's it time to do? What's it time to do? I mean, it's time to do it diligently. And if you don't, sometimes just a, a matter of days, you can miss something. It doesn't mean you've necessarily missed the will of God forever. 
but you, you could have missed something and, and you can be delayed and you can have problems that you shouldn't have had. Can you see that from this passage? Who's saying this? Jesus. How are we to apply this? Read it again. What did he say? When you go with your adversary, you got some trouble. Somebody's upset with you. Somebody's against you. And they're suing you. Going to the judge, going to the court. While you are on the way, how many understand? We're not in the courtroom yet. Ain't no judgment's been passed. Ain't no verdict's been passed. Nothing's happened yet. How many know we got a window? We got a window. God could move. God could change your heart in the next 30 minutes. Right? On the way. It's a 30-minute drive to the courthouse. (laughs) But how many know when the Lord touches you and lets you know, move on this, move on this, then don't you sit up there proud and haughty. Well, I'm mad. I ain't going to talk to them. When God says move, you better move. You better move. I don't feel like doing it. Well, I reckon you'll feel like sitting in jail. I reckon you'll feel like paying for this for the next 20 years. Isn't that what he's talking about? There's an opportunity where if you'll obey him and if you'll move, things will change. And what would have been judgment and what would have cost you can just be fixed, can just be done. And you don't even have to go through all that. Can you say amen? Amen Amen means so be it, so be it for you. Right? But do you have a part to play? That's what we're talking about. You got a part to play. And it's why learning how to be led by the Spirit of God is absolutely one of the most important things you will ever learn in this life. And that sounds strange. If, If that concept sounds strange to you, do not let this get away. I mean... We've got materials. Other people's got materials on it. You can get online, download them for free in their entirety. You can go back to the word supply and and, and learn and feed your spirit. Romans says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit, right, that we're the children of God. If the Spirit of God can let you know you're a child of God, He can let you know something else, right? It's obvious he can communicate to you and let you know that. Well, then he could let you know, do this, do that, stop this, change this, get up and get on it now, boy. Right? And when he does, it ain't time to sleep. It ain't time to mess around. It's time to move. Right? Why? Because God's got some favor working for you. He's got a window open for you. It's time to move. Act. Now, if he tells you to sit still, well, you sit still. Someone said, well, what do I do? You do whatever he, ever he tells you to do. Now, a lot of folk don't like that. Well, you tell me. Can, can we get a book that tells us every day what to do in every situation that could ever come up? No, and if somebody comes up with a thousand volume set, what to do in every situation, save your money. <laughs> there will never be such a thing. Because that would be a substitute for you walking by faith and hearing from the Lord every day. And nothing's ever going to replace that. You must be led by Him. Can you say amen? Amen. So important that we follow fully and be led by Him. Now go, go over to Luke 15. I think I can close with this. Y'all doing pretty good. I think everybody's awake. Huh? Praise the Lord. Luke 15. A little bit more here. Can you take it? Luke 15. Notice this. Verse 8. He said, What woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doesn't sit on the couch... 
and say, Lord, I'm believing that that thing's going to show up. I just believe that you're going to make it appear and show up. Now, what does she do? She lights a candle, sweeps a house, and does what? Seeks diligently 30 minutes, huh? An hour. What if she seeks diligently for half a day and doesn't find it? She keeps on searching diligently. How long? How long? What if she searches a day and doesn't find it? Huh? Or two days? Or three days? Then what? She seeks diligently until what happens? Till she finds it. Till she finds it. The New Living says, won't she light a lamp? and sweep the entire house and search carefully till she finds it. The message says, won't she light a lamp and scour the house looking in every nook and cranny until she finds it? Then the scripture says, seek and you shall find. And then what happens? She found it. She calls her friends together and her neighbors and has a party and says, Rejoice with me. I found the peace that I lost. Does, it, does diligence pay off? Yes. I've had people say, Well, I, I prayed about it and for three days. I, I've been in faith. I've been standing for two weeks. And what do I do now? I said, Well, do you see it? No. Has it happened in, in this realm? No, no. Well, it's obvious. Keep doing it. How long do you do it? Having done all to stand? Yes. Stand. Seek. And having sought, what do you do? Keep seeking. Keep looking. Keep believing. Be diligent. Who gets it? The people that are on it. That are after it. They say, I'm in this for the long haul. I'm not quitting until I get my answer. I'm not quitting until we see the will of God. I know I got all these symptoms. Doctors say I got to die. But I'm after this. He told me, well, long life, he'd satisfy me, and I'm not stopping till I see this. It's mine. I'm laying hold of it. I'm going to confess it. I'm going to say it. If he became poor so I could be rich, and he's already bought and paid for it so I could have wealth and riches in my house, I'm after it. I'm after it. I'm going to have it. People can mock. They can make fun. I don't care what I look like, how little I've got right now. I'm on this as long as it takes. I'll be saying the same thing next month. I'll be saying the same thing next year. I'll be saying the same thing next five years. Lord, tears is coming because it's the Word of God. It doesn't change and it's mine and I'm on it until. How long does she seek? Till she finds it. What did our text say? That every one of you show the same diligence until the full assurance of hope to the end. Can you say amen? amen? Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, there'll be times where the Lord will deal with you with these windows we talked about. Go over here. Check on this. Call them. Look at this. Find out about this and you'll do it and it'll feel like you just run into a brick wall. You'll go, well, I, I did that and nothing. So what do you do now? You don't quit. I said, you don't quit. You keep looking. You say, well, now there's something here that I'm supposed to see. And you back up and you look at it again. And you hang around and you... You look at it again and you check it again and, and you check it tomorrow. How many remember the man of God? It had been a drought for years. And he went there and prayed. You remember that? And he got down on his knees and put his head down on the ground. He's praying, told his servant, go out and look. He went out there and said, there ain't nothing out there. What did he say? Go look again. So, <laughs> right? How many know when the Lord tells you something, you just stay on it? You just stay on it. And he came back and he said, well, there's nothing out there. He said, go look again. He came back and said, I'm telling you, I looked real good. I looked everywhere. There's nothing out there. He said, go look again. How many times is that? Four? 
He came back and said, nothing, nada, zilch, zilch. What did he say? Go look again. Go look again. <laughs> right? right? How many of the Lord tells you to go and tells you to do something? You just stay there. You just stay in that place. You just persist diligently. How, what the man of God's diligently praying, diligently standing, standing there seven times. And then he came back and said, well, <laughs> there's a little bitty cloud. There ain't much to it. Little bitty cloud. Looks about like the size of a man head. He said, you better tell everybody to get out of here. There's coming a rain. There's coming a downpour. He said, a little, oh, no, there's a little bitty cloud. man." I said, tell everybody to get ready. It's about to pour down. And it did. And it did. What if he'd have prayed one time and said, ah, we tried. You know, just one of them things. You know, you just never know what God's going to do. How about the, the men, the, the four that brought their buddy that was paralyzed? Couldn't get in the parking lot. Donkeys everywhere. Nowhere to park. Right? The place was packed. People out of the doors. Nobody, the ushers told them, the parking lot people said, I'm sorry, this place packed out. You, you can't get in. And they could have said, well, I guess it's just not wasn't the Lord's will for him to get his healing. No, no. They kept on, they just kept going around the place, going around the outside, going around the parking lot. Finally, they got where they could get up close to the building. They still can't get in. They stood there. They couldn't hear anything, couldn't see anything, just up against the building. They looked to the side. They looked to the back. They looked to the front. They looked down. They looked all around. Then they looked up. They said, hey, ain't nobody on the roof. <laughs> ain't nobody up there. Wide open. So they crawled up there, tore up the man's roof. But what do you see? When they lowered him down through there, Jesus didn't say that it's crazy. He said he saw their faith. What did he see and see in their faith? He saw some folk that come for something and they wasn't leaving without it. One way or another, they're there long as it takes. How many understand they were seeking him diligently? Weren't they? Diligently. And did they get rewarded? The man walked away from there. Hallelujah. Under his own power, healed by the power of God. God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Stand on your feet, everybody. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Are there any rewards for being diligent? Oh, many, many, many exceeding abundantly. Praise the Lord.